Good morning. Happy Monday. Welcome to your weekly weather report. I'm your host, Dr. Robin McKay. If you are new, welcome. Say hello in the comments so I can say hi back. And if you are watching live, I'd love to hear from you. Just put your name also in the comments because this uh, platform that I use doesn't always let me see who is here with me. So welcome. Um, let's see. What do you guys need to know before we get started today? One, I am in California on the beach with my husband and my stepdaughter, and this is not my real background. You can see my head going in and out of the, the virtual background, but I, I'm, we're in a, we're in a beach house. And anyway, I decided to have some fun today with some backgrounds rather than showing you my bed, my unmade bed, just keeping it real here. <laughs> um, Okay. So let me think, as we get started today, one of the things that I'm really excited about is that we are having a summer sale on the NEO personality assessment. That's the personality assessment that I give to help spiritual entrepreneurs, leaders, and CEOs understand what their it factor is when it comes to their business, helps you identify who your shadow clients are, and if you happen to have ADHD, we can also kind of get at... It's not an ADHD assessment, but we can get at some of the personality features that are kind of contributing to what's going on with your attention, your uh, perhaps impulsivity, your hyperactivity, and that kind of thing. All this in the service of bridging the gap between where you are right now and that actualized version of yourself that you can see so clearly in your mind's eye. Um, even if you've taken the NEO before, you've not had me interpret it. And what I would say about that is I love interpreting the Neo. It's a little bit like for me, it's like doing a tarot card reading, except with actual data rather than archetypes. It's something that I've been doing for years and years in my work as an executive coach. And um, anyway, we're having a summer sale. So we're going to drop the link to the assessment enrollment page in the comments so you can get yourself enrolled in that. I think that anybody who's got a business, is starting a business, um, it has been in business for a while and is feeling a little burned out. I think everybody benefits from learning more about yourself and in the transformation that happens in the process. There are some gifts that I have also. One of them is that um, I'm able to give you some divine prescriptions for overcoming those challenges that maybe your personality has has saddled you with throughout your life. And certainly I'm no, I'm no stranger to those either. So anyway, I look forward to working with you. That sale is going to be going on through the end of the month, but spaces are limited. Um, not everybody is meant to work with me privately, but those of you who are, I know that you know that you are. So let's, uh, let's do it now. Let's just do it now. All right. Let's go ahead and dive into the weather report for this week. It is Monday, August 15th. We're halfway through the month of August. I'm at the beach. I've already called in the guides. And always, when I'm on the beach, the Lemurians, the Lemurians always show up for me. You know, they, um, they're just my, some of my favorite guides. The Lemurian Height Council is a, is a group that I've worked with for a long time at this point who always have good wisdom. So I'm just going to tune in to what they want to share for this week. One of the things that I wanted to share with you an insight that they gave me while I was walking Cooper this morning, my golden doodle puppy and I always take walks down on the beach before we start the day, not on the beach, but on the bluff above, above the sand. Um, I was looking out in the water and there's all the surfers out on the water this morning. It's kind of a gray cloudy day, of course, in, in the, in, um, on the beach. And, I was looking at the waves and the guide said to me, he said, they said, Robin, are the waves there because, are the surfers there because of the waves or are the waves there because of the surfers? You know, we always think that the waves are always there and maybe they are maybe, or maybe it's like Schrod Schrodinger's cat, you know, that experiment in physics that the cat's in the box and at, it's both dead and alive at the same time. So maybe that's the same thing with the waves. If people aren't there to see it, do the waves exist? We don't know. We don't know. But what they said to me is a couple of things about the waves in the, in the ocean. One is that the surfers go out to the very place where they know the waves are going to be. 
Like they don't go to the lagoon across the way to try to surf. They don't go to the lake. They go to the ocean. They go to the ocean. So that's number one. And they were relating this, of course, to work, to business, to the things that we're doing in, in our lives as, as leaders. And so just to draw that connection then between the ocean and business is that you have to be where you're going to find waves. You have to be where you're going to find your people. If you're not where you're going to find your people, you're not going to find your people. Simple as that. But the other thing that they said to me about the surfers and the waves is this, is that the surfers go, they get on the water, they sit on their surfboards and they wait for the waves and the waves inevitably come. Inevitably they come. The surfers go out there with confidence, knowing that the waves are going to come. And I wonder what business would be like if you're just getting started or if things are a little bit slow from the summer, kind of the midsummer doldrums or whatever. What if you in business were to start to look at the field in front of you, the months in front of you as the ocean, knowing that the waves are inevitably going to come. Now, here's the, here's the magic that I realized today that the guides were sharing with me is that what if the waves come as fast as the surfers desire them to come. In sailing, there's a phenomenon called the doldrums. And it's when the sea goes still, the winds are still, and there's no movement. And even when you're in the doldrums, the sailors still know that the wind is coming, and the waves are coming and they'll start moving again. They're not going to drift in indefinitely. But I have to wonder, given what I know about universal law and given what I know about the power of intention, the power of asking, the power of co-creating with the universe, with God, with spirit, given what I know about that, with the Lemurian council, they just said, what if our intentionality brought the waves more quickly. What if rather than one wave a minute, what if it was one wave every 30 seconds? Or what if it were the ideal number of waves per minute? They're just perfect for you. Just perfect for you. So that's what the guides showed me when I was walking Cooper. So funny how they do that. I'm in the middle of doing an ordinary thing and the guides are showing me this whole other world, this whole other way of looking at the world, at business, at life. And maybe that'll help you too. Um, let's see. Okay, so this week, just in terms of themes, one is focus and two is command. Focus and command. Florence Scovel Shin said that your word is your wand. So our words carry frequency and our words can command in the things that we wish to do to be and to have. This is something that I teach in the actualization accelerator that's going on right now. You can jump in, by the way, if that's something that that's a great resource for you if you want to learn more about that. Um, but we have to focus. And it's one of the hardest things, especially if you've got a brain like mine and there's so many things going on in the world and you, it's hard to differentiate sometimes between what's noise and what's what's important, what's, what's to be focused on. But it is important to spend some time this week focusing on what it is that you desire, to clarify with yourself what it is you desire. One of my best focusing mechanisms is to journal or to write, to write it out. There's something very precise about handwriting your heart's desires, or handwriting the things that you want to happen this week or how you want to feel this week. So focus. And then the second is command. We're not always so good at commanding because we've been taught from the time we're little kids that we're bossy. A lot of, a lot of women leaders were taught from the time we were little kids that we're bossy. And in fact, on that Neo personality assessment that I, that I was just sharing with you, one of the facets of personality is assertiveness. And a lot of times women leaders are gonna score high to very high on assertiveness, which is just fine but we have kind of a wonky relationship with that assertiveness. It's like we have to figure out how to assert ourselves without appearing to be bossy. 
I once was told when I was working in the pharmaceutical industry that I had the most subtle form of leadership my boss had ever seen. And what she meant by that was that I would look at the group of people who I was leading, all of whom were very, very bright, all of whom had higher credential, higher degrees and credentials than I did. And I would figure out a way to move them in the direction that they needed to go so that they were volunteering for activities that needed to be done in the service of the project without me actually telling them what to do. I've gotten much more clear in my leadership style since then, much more commanding in leadership. And perhaps you will too, and perhaps you already have. But when it comes to our heart's desires, sometimes we're taking a very subtle approach to commanding in, to asserting our will, our, our desires on the matrix, on this field that we're interacting with every single day. So why not today start treating your heart's desires with command? And you can do so with expectation. You can do so with gratitude. You can do so with kindness. You don't have to throw a temper tantrum to command in that which you desire. In fact, that's probably not always the best thing to do, although it does work sometimes, actually, because it's the, it's the, um, the frequency and the intensity that you bring forward. Temper tantrums actually do work. But then you've got to also deal with the uh, residual energies that flow out of that temper tantrum, too. So I don't. I don't highly recommend that approach to manifesting your heart's desire, but if you can generate enthusiasm, determination, a zest for life, a joy, and direct that, command it, command it and, and expect it. That's where you're going to start to see some shifts come very quickly. Some synchronicity showing up in your life. It's going to come very quickly for you. All right. So those two words today, this week, remember, focus and command. Those are the two that the guides are encouraging us to activate, to align with, and play. That's the other one, is play. In fact, in like five minutes, we are headed to SeaWorld sea for the day, so i got to pop off here before somebody pops into my background and says, it's time to go. At any rate, if this was helpful for you, please leave your comments. Let me know what you took away. And as always, remember that these readings are perspective. Take what works, leave the rest, and I wish you the best week, and let me know the magic you're creating.